this is Kirsten. We're doing um, a live chemical free home class and we are going to be getting started here. We are in the beautiful location of my backyard. And here are the guests of this class, all learning how to be chemical free. So if anyone asks questions on there, you can mm -hmm. raise your hand and say them out loud. But okay. since it's just your soup who wants to watch the movie. Okay. So, um, the purpose of this class today is, it's a little bit different than a lot of the classes that I've done before in that the focus is really on toxins, what toxins are in your home in seemingly safe everyday products. So raise your hand if you or someone you know has allergies, headaches, get brain fog, fatigue, muscle aches. Hormone problems, ADD, ADHD, anything like that. You don't know anybody with any of those what? problems? No, I was just listening. But okay. Yeah. <laughs> so um, these are really common problems that people face. And um, if you don't have any of these problems, I can bet that you know at least one or two or three or four or five people that do suffer from one of them one or more of these. Would that be a fair statement? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, and there's some uh, annoyance spray. Mary Sue Willer says raising hands really high. Yeah. So, the the thing is, <laughs> is we have this, we have this um, perception that it's just kind of normal. Like, everyone has problems, and it's just normal to have those problems, right? Because, you know, we're human, and we're mortal. Um, and that's true, but I think that we kind of take for granted that uh, that these problems are normal when they don't have to be, um, or that they're not um, preventable. And in many cases, they are preventable. And so what I want to talk today is about um, the chemicals that are hiding in our supposedly safe products at home. So there's actually one thing that you can do like it can be kind of overwhelming when you are, um, if you're if you're to take, and I know that a lot of you guys have already gone to take steps towards eliminating toxins out of your home. But for someone that is brand new to it, if you're gonna do one thing to make your home safer, does anyone have any guesses at what that might be? If you're gonna go and, and rid your house of one, just one thing. Bleach, sugar. Bleach, sugar, oh I like those answers, what else? Anyone else have any guesses? Air okay. Mm -hmm. Candles. Candles. And stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, um, except for the sugar, there's something those things had in common that you guys said. Fragrances. Fragrances. Right. So sugar. I agree with the sugar. Um, that's sort of a different topic because we're you can approach um, getting healthy from a couple of different standpoints, and I think the. Uh, letting food be your medicine standpoint is a very very good one and that's actually where I started and why I'm so late to the party to um, look at the chemical side of things because I started with food but um, it really takes looking at the whole the whole picture of our life what are we putting in our bodies what are we putting on our bodies and what are we using in our household environment and today we're going to kind of talk about the household environment and what we're putting on our bodies um, so the, the other common denominator with, between the things that you guys said was fragrances. Pretty much all, um, most if not all household products, body products, contain fragrance. And what they don't tell you is that fragrances can contain up to 300 different toxic chemicals that they don't have to label. And there's actually no need for fragrances to contain these because con fragrances can also contain normal natural things like essential oils, um, spices, Cars. and things like that. So it's normal, um, there's normal fragrances that smell good, like we're outdoors and we can probably smell the elm and the oak and the pecan trees if we knew what we were, you know, trying to, to, to smell. But there's also, because of this umbrella that the FDA says is safe, they can pretty much take any chemical, if they want to add a toxic chemical to your product, what all they have to do is go and add it to the fragrance first, and then they don't have to label it. So they can add it to the fragrance portion and then put the fragrance into your, um, into your, into your product, and they don't have to 
disclose what's in the fragrance because that's proprietary information. You wouldn't want someone copying your fragrance recipe. That's your recipe. You don't want people copying that. So they can dump any of those chemicals into your fragrance. And so let's think about, um, yeah. Someone. Even toilet paper. Even toilet paper. That's disgusting. That's what Kathleen and you're correct. said. Yeah, you're correct. <laughs> um, but yeah, so even... You know, even toilet paper has it. But let's let's think about, let's just take a mental tour of your home right now. Or if you've already gone toxin-free, then imagine your best friend's house or your mom's house or whatever. And let's take a little tour. So you go in the front door and let's say you go into the kitchen first. What is, and we're not, we're not going to worry about the foods right now because that is a whole other can of worms um, that I love to talk about. But that would make this class like five hours long and we're going to stay away from that for the moment but in the kitchen what's under the kitchen sink what kind of cleaners do we have under the kitchen sink you have like your bleach your everyday cleaner you have your windex. 409 windex 409 fabuloso you have um your uh, dishwashing soap um up by the sink you probably have some dish soap some hand soap you might have uh dishwasher detergent all of those things all of them unless you specifically looked and bought unscented, are going to have fragrance in them and some other things we're going to talk about. Um, okay, so we move on from the kitchen, and now let's go, into, uh, let's go into the bathroom. And what kinds of things are in the bathroom? So you've got your scrubbing bubbles. You've got um, whatever it is, you know, bleach or whatever it is that you, you know, clean, keep mildew out of the bathroom. You've got whatever you scrub your toilet with. Um, things, brighteners for the metals, things like that. Air fresheners. Air fresheners, because the bathroom is stinky. So Hair air freshener. Spray. Hairspray. Um, yeah, and then there's all of the body products. You know, if you look into your shampoos and your lotions and your moisturizers and your makeup and all of these things, all of those things are made up of a lot of chemical things, but a lot of them also have fragrance. Okay. Toilet um, your toilet paper. If you have a baby, then you're going to, if you, there's all the baby items, the wipes and the diapers and, and all of those things. Um, then it, throughout the rest of your house, you have to have things to clean your windows. You are putting stuff on your floor. Um, and then it's so great. You get to walk barefoot. Um, your skin is your largest organ. You get to walk barefoot across your floor and you get to absorb all of that wonderful <laughs> fragrance. Mm. So you're, you're getting all of this. So it's a huge mistake to think that um, fragrances don't affect you and that they don't get into your body. Um, and so let's talk a little bit. We're going to dig a little bit deeper now into what is in fragrances. So I guess to wrap up that point, if you were to do one thing or suggest one thing to someone struggling with these issues, any of these issues, um, it would be to remove fragrances. Um, if, they, if they're not willing to go as far as buying non-toxic products, at least if they could get fragrance-free products, the unscented version of everything, that would help. That would help eliminate a big chunk of the the problems. Okay, um, so let's talk about what's in these fragrances. Uh, everyone, rep repeat after me. Phthalate. 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 So it's spelled P-H-T-H-A-L-A-T-E-S. Um, and phthalates are found in pretty much everything that's labeled fragrance. And um, you won't have read this usually because it doesn't have to be labeled on its own. Um, so what are phthalates? They are endocrine disruptors. Um, there's been studies that show that men with more phthalates in their blood count have lower sperm counts. They can trigger migraines and asthma. Um, according to the National Indus Institute of Health, because I was like, well, what is an endocrine disruptor? So I did a little bit of digging. Endocrine disruptors are chemicals that may interfere with the body's endocrine system and produce adverse developmental, reproductive, neurological, and immune effects in both humans and wildlife. So even if you don't care about your own well-being, think about your family, and then think about all those things running off and then going out into the environment and the animals and aquatic life that are being affected by that because they don't break down and disappear on their own. They stick around. Um, so your exposure to ph phthalates are usually through inhalation, but it can also happen through scented soaps and lotions, which is actually, I found out, even a bigger risk than the ones you inhale because um, 
your skin is the largest organ of your body and unlike your digestive system and your respiratory system which have some natural filters to filter out toxins your skin has no filter there is no filter to get the to keep the toxins from absorbing into your skin into your bloodstream so if it has molecules tiny enough to enter into your bloodstream it's going straight to your organs nothing's filtering it out and that's kind of scary because these are th these, and you also have to think about the fact that these are things that you are using throughout your whole life. Nobody shampoos their hair only once. Nobody puts on lotion only once. No one puts lip balm on only once. You know, you don't walk across barefoot across your floors only once. This is something that you do on a daily basis. So you have to consider this is high, high exposure levels. Um, and it can be a little bit at a time. But if you eat a huge bowl of ice cream and a, have a six pack of beer every night, you know, you're going to get fat. Like, that's just the way it's going to be. <laughs> um, and, you know, doing that once may not make you fat, but so it's the same idea. One time exposure to something, your body can probably handle daily exposure, um, has a cumulative effect that your body cannot fight off and cleanse itself from. Um, so, endocrine disruptors also affect infertility, they cause endometriosis, um, certain kinds of cancers. They're especially dangerous during formative years, and formative can be while in the womb, and formative can also be like going through puberty and, and any kind of growth. So basically, up you know up through beginning adulthood, kids and young people are especially vulnerable. It can cause neurological problems like developmental delays and various brain conditions. Um, and when you're talking about how endocrine disruptors work, basically they mimic your naturally occurring hormones and they bind to the cell receptor sites where your, your body should be making these natural hormones and the cell receptor sites are open and ready to bind to them while these fake ones come in and bind to them instead and then your body doesn't um, send out the, the signals that it would normally. So it, you end up with this whole domino effect from the, the cells have already absorbed or been attached to these fake hormones and then that affects not only not only the hormonal issues, but hormones control a lot of different bodily functions that then are affected by um, that happening. So they, um, they, and then they also block the way natural hormones and the receptors are made or controlled. So that's the danger we have with phthalates. If you were to, if you were to um, get rid of all your scented stuff, you are going to be protecting yourself so much because obviously you can't protect yourself from every toxin in the world. You don't have a lot of control over the air you breathe outside or what you come into contact with outside of your home. But shouldn't your home be that one safe place? Shouldn't your home be the, the place that you're not putting yourself or your family in danger? You know, that should be, it should be safe. And when people come into your home, you know, they, you're, you either have, have a, a place that is making them healthier or less healthy. Like that's, that, that's the truth of it. Um, so, and then I'm just going to go over some of these others real quick. So the next one is a really long word, perchloroethylene, but you can call it perk for short. Um, this one's a possible carcinogen, which means it's cancer causing. Uh, if that's not bad enough, it's also a known neurotoxin. It's found in dry cleaning, carpet cleaners, spot removers, upholstery cleaners. Um, and so we hear the word neurotoxin. What does that mean? Does anyone know what a neurotoxin is? Yeah, I didn't either. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it's toxic to the brain um, and the nervous system. So they can cause a loss of coordination, dizziness, disorientation, memory loss, intellectual disability, epilepsy, dementia. So that's awesome. Um, the next one is triclosan. And this is one is, uh, there's good news about it because it's recently been recalled. Um, basically, the FDA found that it was not, it, it was in most antibacterial hand soaps and anything labeled antibacterial, but they found that it wasn't any more effective at preventing the spread of disease than just washing your hands with soap. Um, so, it shouldn't be in any more products that are being sold, but if you have any products in your house that contain this, toss them out because um, one of the things that it does is it actually causes an overgrowth of drug resistant um, bacteria, which is not what you want. It does the same thing with the bacteria in your house that antibiotics can do in your body, making that 0.01% or whatever that can survive it that much stronger. So you breed superbugs by using antibacterials. 
Um, the next one, quaternary ammonium compounds, or quats for short. These are also an antimicrobial agent, so like triclosan, they'll be found in many antibacterial products, as well as fabric softeners and dryer sheets. They can also cause an overgrowth of antibiotic-resistant bacteria, as well as being a skin irritant. Um, so they cause contact dermatitis and then respiratory disorders and things like asthma and allergies. Uh, the next one is 2-butoxyethanol. And again, some of these are labeled in the ingredients and others are in that umbrella of fragrance. So it, you can look for them, but they may or may not show up. Um, this toxic chemical can, chemical can be found under all sorts of names. Um, I'm not going to read them all, but they, uh, ethylene glycol, monobutyl ether, ethylene glycol, butyl ether, butyl cellulose, cellusol, butyl oxytol, and like 20 more. Mm -hmm. um, but you'll find it, this is most commonly found in multi-purpose cleaners, window cleaners, degreasers, cosmetics, inks, and liquid soaps. So this is one that you can breathe in or absorb through your skin. Um, and when you breathe it in, some of it exits your body when you exhale, and the rest stays in your lungs and absorbs into your bloodstream. So this can cause anything from sore throats to narcosis, pulmonary edema, and liver and kidney damage. Um, the next one's ammonia. Um, good news, ammonia does not cause cancer. Unfortunately, this common ingredient is found in window cleaners, polishes, um, but it's also a respiratory ir irritant and can lead to chronic allergies, bronchitis, and asthma. Um, this, the exposure to ammonia is usually through inhaling. Uh, when mixed with bleach, it actually makes a poisonous gas, so they should never be used together. Um, the next one is chlorine. This familiar chemical is found in scouring powders, toilet bowl cleaners, mildew removers, laundry whiteners, and household tap water. And not only is it an acute respiratory irritant, but it's also linked to thyroid disruption. Thyroid disruptors are a subfamily of endocrine disruptors. So you're, if you're wondering what disrupting your thyroid can actually do, um, developmental defects, tumors, hyperfunction of hormones, um, exposure during pregnancy can cause the fetus, neurodevelopmental problems, including low IQ scores, behavioral and cognitive difficulties. Um, and in adults, it can cause cardiovascular problems and hypothyroidism. So why are we using these and what are our alternatives? I'm going to close my computer now. And if anyone wants any of the sources, I have links for all of my research, which I can um, message to anybody who would like to read over all those big words on their own. So what can we do about this? I know that some of you guys have already taken the steps in your home. So what are things that you use instead? And I'll talk about the things Thieves. I use. Mm -hmm. So you use mm -hmm. Thieves Cleaner. OK, so I'll, I'll pull that one out since you mentioned that. Um, so the Thieves Cleaner is a multi-purpose cleaner. Um, what do you use it for? What don't I use it for? <laughs> what don't you use it for? Um, so give us some examples. Um, clean the stove, the sink, the counters, the cabinets, um, the washing. toilet, um, clean the um, washing machine, um, inside the dishwasher, inside the washing machine and outside the washing machine not into the dryer, um, the, the floor, um, uh, wiping things, glass things down um, that are dusty or, or dirty. Um, awesome. Yeah, so what I like about the Thieves Cleaner is that it is an, an all-purpose cleaner and you can use it, you can dilute it different ratios to do different parts of your house or heavier or lighter jobs and um, being kind of a wannabe minimalist it appeals to me to only have to buy a few products and be able to use them for multiple purposes so you don't have to buy 10 different products for different 10 different areas of your house yes Mary Sue says she lets her boys wash the bathroom with it so they don't and they don't have to use gloves and it smells so great and gets so clean. Yes, yes. Before I had all these people over at my house, my kids were using it to clean the bathroom and the kitchen and everything. And it's yeah, it is it's great because they can use as much as they want and I don't have to worry about it getting on their skin or them breathing it in or whatever. It's perfectly safe. I found my son using it as hairspray once, which I disapproved of because I was like, You don't need that in your hair. But mm -hmm. I wasn't worried about him getting like a chemical burn or something. Like if he'd mm -hmm. sprayed bleach on his head, I would have been like, Oh my gosh, like <laughs> been terrible so the way it works um, is that you have a spray bottle 
and you put a small amount in the bottom and fill up the rest with water. So it's actually very economical too. You'll find that it's cheaper to use Thieves Cleaner than it is to buy, you know, Fabuloso or whatever. Like your all-purpose cleaners at the store are going to cost three or four bucks, you know, $2.99, $3.99, something like that. Um, and the Thieves Cleaner ends up being, depending on how much you dilute it, probably about a dollar per bottle um, once you once you make it up. And the dilution ratios, you can do it for most cleaning. It's um, 30 parts water to one part cleaner. Heavy degreasing, you go to 15 to one. Light degreasing, 50 to one. And then glass, 50 or 100 to one. Like you only need a teeny tiny bit for glass. Not only that, but it saves the planet because you don't have to keep buying more plastic bottles that you're just gonna be putting in the landfill. Right, yeah. I went to a landfill yesterday and it was horrible and it made me just feel guilt for our whole society. So, it was terrible. Dante knows. Um, okay, so what else do we use for cleaning our house? So that replaces a lot of the stuff that we just talked about. What are some other things that you guys use for cleaning your house? Lemon is the greaser. Yeah, so I pulled out my little bottle of lemon. So you can actually use fresh lemons for a lot of bleaching, lemon juice and stuff too, but lemon oil works well too. So um, uh, yesterday I, uh, this is sort of on the topic of cleaning, but I had gone to work on our bus and I came home. I felt like I was covered in, it felt like soot. It wasn't soot, but it was just like, maybe it was partially soot because he was using the metal grinder in there and I just was like, black and dusty all over and I came home and made an olive oil scrub with lemon and lang lang and I put peppermint in there because it smelled good and then I just like all over scrubbed it and it smelled so good and my skin was so soft but lemon is also great for degreasing other things you can use it um, on spots on clothing for whitening you can use it to get glue um, or stickers labels off things like that um, if there is a spot that's like particularly sticky and gross, like if, if a sticker gets put on something or um, there's buildup of some sort, like sometimes on the top of the refrigerator, refrigerator, like if you haven't wiped it down in a while or you only clean it once a year, not me of course, but some people only clean on top of their fridge like once a year. Um, the citrus oils are really nice because it builds up kind of a, it, there's dust, but it's also stickiness from moisture and stuff. And the citrus oils are awesome for cleaning that up and it will cut right through it. So lemon is really good for that. Um, and then of course, you can also use Thieves, which the Thieves cleaner um, is what I use, but some people love to make their own. So you could use, uh, as a base, you could use vinegar or vodka or something and then add thieves to it if you wanted to make your own. I find it more economical. The number of drops that I would want to put into my DIY cleaner, it's more economical to just buy the, the thieves cleaner. Um, and then uh, purification. Does anyone use purification in any of their cleaning stuff? Um, I put it in um, on cotton balls and I put them in the closets in some of the drawers that get real stuffy, especially when it's so humid in the in the summertime. Okay. And then you open up your closet, and it's just like something, just like no air circulating, and it's just stagnant. And right. Then, yeah. Yeah. And in your diffuser, whenever you you know need to have my smelling, would you put something in a pan? I wouldn't know so. anything about that. <laughs> I just I never burn anything. <laughs> Someone the other day told me that they use tea tree, a little solution of tea tree. They spritz their shower with it, and the grime oh, that's goes a, away. Yeah, that's they a just, really good idea. Purification and the purification has tea tree in it, um, and both of those really help fight um, shower grime. Um, I like to put purification in my laundry, and um, for laundry, laundry is a big one as far as toxins it has a lot of the different uh, toxins we talked about most are fragrance but even the unfragranced ones have um, various toxins in them so if you can replace your laundry detergent with something better um, that I have been but I'm about to switch over to to try out for a little while because I haven't um, I haven't given the thieves laundry detergent a proper try so I'm about to to try it for a month or two and see how I like it but I have been using soap nuts and um, soap nuts are fun because they are completely natural and um, okay. 
biodegradable. We can leave it. Um, because it's biodegradable, it's <laughs> not going to harm anything. It's just going to make my porch clean. <laughs> um, and you basically you put them in a tea bag or a mesh bag of some sort, and then you throw them in to your washer. And then I put a drop or two of purification in there to prevent any mildew or anything like that. And it makes it all smell nice. Um, and then you also can put uh, purification or lavender onto your laundry ball, uh, dryer ball. Sorry. Um, instead of using dryer sheets, which are highly toxic, um, you can put whatever you, whatever oil you want to scent your laundry with onto your dryer balls and then turn the dryer on and, and uh, it will give it a, a nice natural scent. Um, if you really like a scent that sticks around, lavender doesn't stick around as much, it smells really good while you're drying, but lemongrass sticks around and your clothes will stay smelling a little bit more lemony. It has, for whatever reason, it has a little more staying power than lavender does. Um, so those are some options for, um, for general cleaning, for laundry. Um, purification is also great for uh, getting rid of stinky smells both in your car, in your carpet, where else, gym bags, shoes, um, basically anywhere that you get stink, funky smells from yourself, your pets, your children, whatever. Um, purification is going to be a really good option because it, it's not just like masking a smell. It's not just covering it up. It is actually completely eliminating the smell and the cause of the smell. Um, although if you do happen to have a bottle of chocolate milk that gets left in your car and you can't identify like where that smell is coming from, there's no amount of purification that will completely eliminate that. So it's really good to identify the chocolate milk that's been sitting there for a week and throw it out. Just do yourself that favor. But then the purification will clean the air that was <laughs> putrefied by that chocolate milk. I wouldn't know, but I heard about this person that had that problem once last week. <laughs> it was really strange. Um, what else? We covered, so that, go back to your mental tour. What, what else do, do, did we not cover? We covered our, so for dish soap, um, Young Living has a dish soap which sometimes I use the Young Living dish soap and then when I run out, I tend to use um, Castile soap and then I add thieves or purification to it. I feel uh, like, because I've been using, um, I, I would take Castile soap, just an unscented one, and add thieves cleaner to it and like maybe a little water if I yeah. needed to spread it out. Yeah. And try to wash dishes with it, but... It didn't work? I, no, I mean, I feel comfortable with it because I know that it is a safe way to like sanitize your dish but I didn't feel like it was like that degreasing clean that you get from normal yeah. products right so I haven't heard any suggestions on that maybe before. lemon essential oil because it can take away the grease I know that um, Sherry has a good recipe on overthrow Martha um, I when I've used the Castile soap I have been doing it in my foaming hand soap pump and I actually just have my brush and I put the foaming, I do one pump of foam, and then I wash, like I just wash. I've also used my Thieves Spray, too, when I've run out. But dish soap's a hard one, because even ones that are seemingly non-toxic, some of those heavy degree certain actions that you're getting are from some of the toxic ingredients, because um, even there's, like, what's the brand at Target that's supposedly their version of non-toxic? I can't remember what it was but someone the other day was saying that that's what they used and so we looked it up on the environmental working group website and it rated like a d yeah. and the scale is a through f so d is not a good rating mm -hmm. <laughs> um so that's uh that's that's a tough one but i i really like the the young living dish soap it's just it is a little bit expensive but it's a matter of just figuring out like I'm saving a lot of money on a lot of other things that I'm not buying. So that's where you as an individual have to weigh your pros and cons, where you want to spend your money. Yeah. Jessica Sword writes, method, question mark? Yeah, I think yep. that's it. That was that's it. it. That was it. Um, and you can check. I could, I could have made a mistake. But if you go to ewg.org, you can look at any of your body products, any of your cleaning products, and they'll give you a rating based on the ingredients that are in it. Um, and that's a, a source that I really trust to, uh, to give me a, an unbiased look at what's in my products. Um, 
So, and then of course there's all the body products. Body products are, I find, easier, even easier than the cleaners to replace because lotions and body butters and stuff are um, not difficult to make. And then Young Living has a lot of good alternatives for the non-DIY people, but they're fun. I mean, it's kind of fun to make them too. And there's a lot of really wonderful recipes that you can find um, on my website, on overthrowmartha.com, um, and some other places. Overthrowmartha.com? That's Sherry's website. Overthrowmartha.com. Overthrowmartha.com. Like Overthrow Martha Stewart? I think so, originally. I think she named it before she realized it was going to be as popular as it was. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Uh, does anyone have any questions or anything? Your mom, when we, we went away for a week, or came up here for the baptism, and uh, we had had problems with some bugs in the house, and so in her bedroom, she set off one of those bombs. The bug bombs? The bug bombs, and came home, did not think about it, went ahead and slept on the sheets, and oh, she has had a problem ever since. I mean, she made her body. Yeah, really she's developed alert. severe contact dermatitis to pretty much everything now, including yeah. essential oils mm -hmm. and basically anything. She can't put anything but like water on her body because um, this poison, like, she. So she's doing a lot of like detoxing. So I don't know if she wanted that on Facebook or not, but it is what it is, right? Oh. It's the truth. Uh, okay, let's wrap up the Facebook class. So thank you anyone who watched. I hope that was helpful, Mir Sue. Um, and uh, we're going to, I'll wrap that up and we'll continue chatting here. Thanks, guys.